Hey guys, Adam Hortonberry here with the Vice Squad. Welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be tying up a Franken Flatliner. It's in the Kelly Gallup series style flies. Um, fishing for bass, trout, pike, anything like that. Um, this is going to be on a one knot up front and a one partridge in the rear. Partridge attitude. Um, before we get started today, I just want to thank Anadromus Company and the Fly Life Company for sponsoring. And if you want to check out their gear, uh, fishingandoutdoors.ca <clears throat> for Canadian, excuse me, and fishingandoutdoors.net for the U.S. Um, yeah, let's begin. We're going to tie ours today on an olive variation. <clears throat> for thread, you're going to want to use either a gel spun or a Vivas Power 140. Hold on one sec, this hook's a little wonky. Let me switch that out. But your, what you're gonna wanna do is, you wanna get you a nice stout uh, thread for this. Because when you're doing the head of this fly, you gotta put a little more tension than you normally would. Plus you gotta add a shank, et cetera, et cetera. But we're gonna start it, the thread, go halfway back. Start it, stop it about there. About the halfway point-ish. I think we're gonna add our flash first. I like to go a little heavier on the flash. You can always trim it out later if you're not digging it. I like to kind of taper it a little bit beforehand too. Fold it back, disperse it with your thumb a little bit. And I, with this, you're gonna to wanna to use the uh, Whiting's American uh, Rooster saddle. And you're gonna to wanna to marry two of them together with some tear mender. Um, there's plenty of videos out there on how to do that, but I two-toned it, white on the bottom, golden olive on top. And I like to put them just about like that where the flash is just kind of peeking out the end there. And I like to just kind of, I don't like to reef on it straight away. Then we're gonna do a little marabou palm right up halfway. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't trap any of the fibers in there. There's your body, and we're gonna two-tone the top of it. You just wanna make sure you get out the necessary fibers on your marabou at the bottom there. Kinda wet it. And you're gonna to wanna to go opposite sides of it, because this, this is essentially a dying minnow, so a bait fish. Clean it up. Here's your belly. 
Add that in there, right there. One, two, set it. Trim that up. And then we're gonna move to our first shank. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a, I believe this is a 20 or 25 mil from Fleming. You can use whatever you want. You just wanna keep it about that width for your middle connection point. All right, for this part, we're just gonna use um, the UV polar chenille. And that'll serve us for our body for this. Give it a nice thread base. Use a little glue so you can bring it back a little further. I like to take it back a little bit further onto that loop just so you can have more of a seamless transition in the body. And you want those fibers on your reflector flash or polar chenille to be going down towards the ground. Just helps in the taper of it. Wind it back, bring it straight up on top of there. Palmer that all the way up. <clears throat> the next bunch of portions of this pattern are gonna be a lot of stopping and repeating, so we're gonna have to stop here. Add a little marabou and two-tone this so we, we have a nice body build on that. You want it to go about three quarters of the way back just so you're building that taper in the fly. And you're we're gonna wanna be putting it on its side like that because this, you know, there's a top and the bottom. And we're trying to get that um Actually, whoops. Bottom and top, rather, sorry. Bottom. Bottom. And there we go. Because the top is up here, the belly's down there. Because it's supposed to be like in the process of dying or already dead. And as you strip it in, it'll kind of just, you know, something like that. One on the side ain't gonna matter too much. Go over that. and just wind back a little bit onto that marabou so when we put some more reflector flash in. And use your thread to kind of close up that eye right there. Palmer that up. Leave a little room. We're gonna slightly wipe back, or uh, wind back onto it anyway. Cover all that up. 
part that I messed up anyway. Two. But it doesn't really matter anyway. You're just essentially adding a little, you know, little tone to it. Just a little shorter on that, on that last one for this shank. But when this fly is done, it's gonna be quite large, you know, around, around the seven, seven inch, something like that. Maybe even slightly bigger. And we're gonna wet finish this. And because it's closer to the head where I find fish attack it more, I'm gonna hit this one with a little bone dry. UV resin. And for the connection for this to the hook, we're gonna actually use the shank cut down. I find you can use wire, but I just think it helps and uh, it's easier. Pulse that. And then yeah, just grab a grab one of your shanks, grab a longer one, whatever you got. What you're gonna want to do is take a pair of cutters. You're only gonna want about that much right there. Take them. Cut that. Open it up a little bit with your finger. Get that prepped. I like to start the thread right where the head will begin. So about there. Just so I know that's my stopping point. Take it back just a little further to help. Give that something to sit on. And this is where you want to go light wraps. Cover that up. Be careful not to cut your thread. And then work your way back. We're gonna glue this heavily. Um, you don't want this to slip out. Again, cover up that connection point. Working on back, close out that gap so we don't have too much sway right here. You always wanna close your connection points up on game changers or anything like this so you don't have, um, so you don't have a, you don't have a Fallon on you to where it's swinging back all over the place. We're gonna do a couple reps of this. Reflector flash or, you know, you, polar chenille, whatever you have. This is in copper for this. You can honestly switch it up if you, if you only have like a um, cactus chenille, use that too. You'd wanna go in a size large if you have that. We're gonna stop there. And that's where we're gonna do our, uh, we're gonna just wrap back just a little bit onto that. Almost back to where we tied it in, actually. Just so we can. That's where we're gonna Palmer one white marabou feather in there. Cut the tip. 
Give you a little tie-in point if you want. Tie back, clean it up. I would suggest not doing these um, super tight together, but just make sure you're preening them back. This is the thickest part of the uh, the bait fish too, right here. So we want it to be a little webbier and wild, you know? You could even add a rattle into this particular pattern if you want. You can just make it yours. Get it out of the way. You could tie it on a uh, A-Rex bent hook with a deer hair head if you wanted. Kind of go Tommy Lynch D&D uh, &D style. Would also work out awesome. You could even throw a popper head on it and kind of go Schultzy style with like a um, oh, what's the pattern called? Anywho, I'll think of it later. But yeah, just there's your other half of that body. And then we're gonna go for another two tone. Go right back into it. So we have that transition nice and nice. Two cinch it trim. Now we're gonna do the bottom. We're Cinch. I'm gonna put your hook back there so it doesn't get you. And yeah, some of these steps are quite repetitive, so if you want to fast forward through it, be be my guest. Something I personally like to do is just give it a thread base. Now, just to give it something to go on. I like to give it a light little dab of super glue just so that laser dub is something to grab onto. You do not have to do it that way because some people like to adjust them a bunch and whatnot. And I pre-mixed it. I pre-mixed it with a little bit of that. And you're going to want to, you know, mix them together, pull them out, make sure it doesn't break. Bring it back. Bring it around the thread. You're going to want to have it do that cupping motion. Set it. Two reps done and the next three are repetitive again so so when it lands it does that that was my mistake Go up. It helps the action of the fly when it's like this, so. I might add just a tiny bit more dubbing to the front of this fly, depending on how it looks. And 
just a pinch to kind of break it up though. You want to keep it super sparse when you're doing this. The belly, I like to have just a tiny bit more, just so it helps keel it a little bit. Instead, on the end of that fly. Been an interesting video. Two thread breaks. Happy accidents, though. Happy accidents. Three thread breaks. Just whip finish that. Just for comfort's sake, because of how many times we had the thread break on me on this. Just gonna hit that tiny bit with a little zap. Now for the eyeballs, you can do whichever you want, personally. I'm a big fan of the Living Eyes by Flyman. And we're gonna do 10 mil and the wind color. You're gonna need some gel, super glue. Put it right in the middle. Pretty good little dab there. Now I like to do it where that is facing towards the hook at a slight angle. And then I'll put the other side on. Use your hands to pull that, get it nice and straight. Nice dab. I'll kind of spin it in a sec so you can see what we're going for here. And I just like to hold it there about um, 20 seconds or so. Then we'll trim the head and it's done. That'll do. Get it in a nice mohawk phase and just pull out any of your stragglers. I like to use straight scissors for my first and then I switch to a to a, a round. You just want to get a nice little angle back. You can save it and reuse it. I personally don't because by the time you cut it, you don't end up with many long fibers left, but you can definitely save it and reuse it. A lot of people do. Straighten everything out. Clean up the front of that. Now you could do a lot less flash in the tail. You could add a little more flash right here over the top. I decided to keep it out last second just cause I felt 
with the UV, it had enough going on for what I wanted this pattern particularly to look like. Um, kind of like a juvenile bass kind of deal. But uh, yeah, you can see in the end, it's quite a large pattern. Um, tie one out, check it out. Um, if you guys can, uh, give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, thanks for joining.